Why did Theodor Koka perform over 3,000 thyroidectomies? His clinic was in Switzerland, which is a, was a country plagued by goiter and congenital hypothyroidism. 90% of Swiss school children had goiter due to iodine deficiency. We will never know if over 3,000 people who went under his knife had hyperthyroid symptoms or simply goiter. After one of his supposedly successful surgeries on an 11-year-old girl, Coker remarked how after the surgery, she became peevish and dull, and she wouldn't live long. So Coker finally admitted that the thyroid served a function and decided to remove only half of the gland. The medical understanding of thyroid issues were first recognized when people had an enlarged thyroid. In 1897, Gall named hypothyroidism myxedema because different tissues were swollen all over the body and discovered that it was the atrophy of the thyroid in his patients that made them hypothyroid. And this atrophy was due to iodine deficiency. Since Marine and Kimball's work in 1917, it was clear that sodium iodide prevented goiter formation in adolescence. But once a goiter was formed, doctors were still keen to cut it out. Those patients became then hypothyroid, but unfortunately thyroid juice, as Coker called it during his Nobel Prize lecture in 1909, had not yet been isolated. So anyone who had a thyroidectomy due to goiter became hypothyroid. George Murray first started using thyroid hormone extract from sheep, the thyroid juice, as a treatment for hypothyroidism in 1891. But surgeons were the cowboys of medicine. They were interested in, quote unquote, broadening their practice and scope while enhancing their professional position, stated in an article about Listerism. The surgical removal of the appendix, the uterus, and the thyroid became common at the end of the 19th century. Previous thyroidologists did not factor iodine deficiency into their research as the cause of enlarged or inflamed thyroid tissue. Although they had learned iodine was crucial for thyroid function, they did not yet understand that it was also essential to other tissues, to nearly all tissues in the body. Every single study on goiter states that goiter was more prevalent in females, yet no one ever invest investigated this. Means, a prominent thyroidologist in the 40s and 50s at Harvard, wrote, the thyroid merely traps what it needs and lets the rest go to the kidneys for excretion. Salter's book, The, iodine, the Endocrine Function of Iodine, includes a diagram by A.W. Elmer from 1938 is illustrating the many different tissues that use iodine, along with the liver, testicles, and ovaries. Unfortunately, the diagram leaves out the breasts because breasts need the most iodine after the thyroid. A competition for iodine between breast tissue and the thyroid in a state of deficiency leads to low thyroid function and fibrocystic breast disease. Another problem is the interchangeable use of iodine in treatment. Iodine vaporizes. Coker used, used potassium iodide, which contains a minimal quantity of iodine. John Lugo developed the first iodine solution in 1829, adding potassium iodide and water to elemental iodide to make a solution. And this solution was kept tightly sealed. This is not what gave Theodore Coker his palpitations. The first Lugol solution was a 15% solution called 5% in the U.S. because they only count the elemental iodine. But papers describing iodine treatment for hypothyroid goiter indicate either Lugol solution or potassium iodide interchangeably as if they were the same thing, but they are not. Potassium iodide can provide enough iodine to prevent goiter, but not enough to prevent thyroiditis or fibrocystic breast disease or uterine and ovarian fibroids. In fact, the skin and the thyroid seem to take in potassium iodide, but the breast and stomach tissue take in elemental iodine. 
To add to the confusion, Wolf Tchaikov published a paper in 1948 supposedly proving that iodine suspended thyroid hormone production. Wolf and Tchaikov injected five times the quantity of all the iodine in the rat with potassium iodide attached to a radioactive tracer, supposedly inhibiting the hormone production of the thyroid. This, they said, made them hypothyroid, the rats. Despite this claim, the rats did not become hypothyroid. Wolf Tchaikov never measured the rats' thyroid hormone levels. And then they admitted 20 years later that the effect had been transitory. Even so, the supposed wolf Tchaikov effect was extrapolated to humans, despite no study done on humans to achieve this effect. No other study was able to recreate their supposed conclusion. What really happened was that the thyroid absorbed the iodine, and on achieving sufficiency, the rat's thyroid glands temporarily stopped pulling iodine from the bloodstream. The medical industry, physicians, associations, and publications accepted the WC effect as proven and again demonized iodine. In the 1920s, Plummer and Boothby used 90 milligrams of Lugol solution to normalize thyroid hormone production in a hypothyroid state without damage, damaging the gland itself. In 1969, Wolf Tchaikov published an article in the American Journal of Medicine making doctors think the effect was substantiated. In this paper, Wolf claimed that any amount above 200 micrograms caused the WC effect. That's five cans of sardines. They also implied that iodine was only essential to the thyroid gland. Radioactive iodine and antithyroid drugs block thyroid function, and the subsequent hypothyroidism is treated with levothyroxine. But people fear natural organic iodine supplements, such as Lugol Solution, due to years of misinformation and fabrication. More women suffer from hypo and hyperthyroidism due to iodine deficiency. They need more iodine than men do to the, due to the massive need for iodine and thyroid hormones in adolescence and pregnancy. And this fact is completely overlooked. In 1966, Russian scientists gave 200 women suffering from breast pain 10 to 20 milligrams of elemental iodine. Their theory was that excess estrogens caused by ovarian cysts due to iodine deficiency had created hyperplasia in the breast tissue. After three months, there was no more breast pain and the ovarian cysts began to shrink. So what about Hashimoto's or inflamed thyroiditis, which is the cause of goiter nodules and cysts on the thyroid tissue? Does iodine have to be avoided in this case? It's certainly been proven that goiters, cysts, and nodules shrink when treated with Lugol solution. That's what those doctors were doing when they were using it to treat hyperthyroidism before. Inflammation caused by a high diet, high in fiber and anti-nutrients, causes even more inflammation to the thyroid. Rates of autoimmune thyroiditis, breast cancer, fi breast fibroids, breast cysts, ovarian cysts, uterine fibroids, etc., have risen since the demonization of Lugol's solution and the implementation of iodized salt. Many communities, not just in the U.S., have reported an increase in autoimmune thyroiditis since potassium iodide was added to salt. Weaver studied this phenomenon from 1966 to 1968 in the Great Lakes region, part of the U.S. goiter belt. He studied the change in the thyroid gland removed during surgery from 1915 to 1920, which did not show any swollen lymph tissue, which is the usual sign of inflammation caused by autoimmune thyroiditis. Yet the thyroids he studied after iodized salt was introduced in 1924, were riddled with nodules and lymphocytes. There was minimal autoimmune, autoimmune thyroiditis before potassium iodide was added to salt. 
There was, however, a great use of Lugol solution and potassium iodide in medical practice. So why does iodized salt cause thyroid inflammation? Because there is hardly any iodine in iodized salt. And its iodine is only potassium iodide. And salt provides such a low quantity of potassium iodide that it is not even enough to prevent goiter. The body needs both elemental organic iodine and potassium iodide. The potassium iodide makes the elemental iodine soluble. 10% of iodide evaporates when you open the salt container. And there are only 45 micrograms of potassium iodide in a quarter teaspoon of salt, 45 micrograms. The traditional 5% or 15% solution, if in Europe, Lugol solution, provided 6.25 milligrams of iodine per drop. Marine studies with thousands of adolescents in Akron, Ohio, demonstrated it took an average daily amount of iodine equal to 12 milligrams of Lugol solution to prevent goiter. Just goiter, not fibroids in breasts, ovarian, uterine, and prostate tissue. And certainly not enough iodine to support cortisol secretion. The public was discouraged from using Lugol solution and began to depend on iodized salt for their iodine needs. A doctor named C.L. Harstock from Cleveland, Ohio wrote in 1926, Iodized salt is now being very much more extensively used by the public than other forms of iodine, probably because of the propaganda to ensure its use. When Lugo first developed a 15% solution, the recommended daily intake was 12.5 milligrams, which would be two drops of the 15% or 5% solution. Burson and Yalo demonstrated that the total exchangeable pool of iodine in the body ranges from 17 to 13 to 7 to 13 milligrams. This was divided into two parts, the thyroid gland and extrathyroidal tissues. Many tissues need iodine. The thyroid requires 6 milligrams of iodine and the mammary mammary glands need 5 milligrams of iodine. The adrenal glands need it too. More stress, more iodine. The breasts can compete with the thyroid for iodine the breast and thyroid glands have the exact same iodine trapping mechanism. If there is sufficient circulation, insufficient circulation, either or both tissues will be deficient, which is why thyroid tissue issues are more common in women. It is also why iodine deficiency causes breast cancer. To get the recommended 12.5 milligrams of elemental iodine from iodized salt, you must consume 165 grams of it Five ounces of sardines provides 35 micrograms of iodine. To reach 12.5 micrograms or 12,500 micrograms, I'm sorry, 12.5 milligrams, you must eat 357 cans of sardines. And not only is iodine necessary for many tissues in the body, but it also induces apoptosis, inhibits abnormal cell formation that can lead to cancer. And not only breast and thyroid tissue, but all tissues. It also kills viruses, bacteria, and fungi. In 2018, Quintero Garcia and Delgado Gonzalez demonstrated that iodine not only prevents cancer, prostate cancer due to apoptosis in prostate cancer cells, but also reduces oxidative stress in rat prostate tissue. Today, it's practically impossible to get adequate iodine from food sources in the presence of countless substances that interfere with its absorption. It used to be more common in some geographic areas where the soil was low in iodine. Switzerland is one of those places. That's why they had so many incidences of goiter. Bromide, chloride, iodine, and then fluoride were discovered in the 1800s by the French. All halides and all substances that science has subsequently found uses for. Yet only iodine was essential for human health. The others can take iodine's place in human tissue due to their similar molecular structure, causing iodine deficiency. What else prevents iodine absorption? Cruciferous vegetables from which the antithyroid drug was isolated. They figured that out when farmers saw that their rabbits eating cabbage leaves 
developed goiter. Cassava, sweet potato, and sorghum inhibit iodine absorption. Flame retardants are brominated and found in products, household products, and everything such as electronics, mattresses, couches, ele electrical wires, cables, car seats, and airplane seats, and Mountain Dew. These are only the substances that interfere with iodine assimilation. Soy prevents the thyroid from making hormones. Plenty of regularly prescribed medicines prevent thyroid function as well. Cortisone, dopamine agonists, somastatin analogs, and retinoids inhibit TSH secretion. Lithium, antidepressants, anti-epileptics, metformin, and beta blockers directly affect thyroid function. Interferon A and antiretroviral drugs can induce thyroid autoimmunity. Unfortunately, the symptoms and conditions many of these drugs are prescribed for are often caused by low thyroid function in the first place. Will taking the recommended two drops of 5% Lugol solution cause thyroid cancer? Actually, a deficiency in iodine causes cancer. All those nodulous goiters were caused by an iodine deficiency, like the fibroids and cysts and other iodine collecting tissues. An iodine deficient tissue neutralize, an iodine sufficient tissue neutralize abnormal cell growth, kills viruses, and bacteria and removes mold. In the bloodstream, it envelops toxins and antigenic properties. It's pretty incredible. And if you eat a carnivore diet, the cofactors involved in iodine absorption are in your food. Thank you for listening.